the World Cup. I mean, can easily be forgotten at the moment in, in the midst of the COVID situation here in Australia and an NRL season. Origin right behind us. It's going ahead? Well, the World Cup announces, have announced that it's going to go ahead. However, the Commission's going to meet this week. And I think you'll find the Kangaroos will not sign the participation agreement. The ARL Commission won't be sending a team. Now, the snowball effect of that's going to be interesting because you can't have a World Cup without Australia. Now, whether the, the World Cup organisers decide to, to press on or not, I think you'll find the NRL are going to argue that because of the safety issue to the players and 50,000 cases a day in, in the UK at the moment, that they're going to try and argue that this is not going to be... Uh, uh, they won't deem this as a representative game. Therefore, NRL clubs are not obliged to send players. Because under the current rules, NRL clubs are obliged. They can't stand in their way. However, the NRL are looking at a loophole... It's interesting to note, 15 of the other 16 countries have signed the participation agreement, Gus. I just wanted to get your point. You know the Warriors quite well. The players, they've been away from home for two years. Is there, a, is there an excitement to go over there or is this going to cause players even more unrest after a couple of years away from home? Well, you've got a couple of teams. I mean, the Melbourne Storm have been away from home for two years now. The Warriors have been away from home for two years. We finished late last year because we delayed our competition and the elite players were playing Origin right through to the end of November. We had a shortened pre-season this year. The other concern is that if we go over to England this year and they play in those competitions and then they've got to go to quarantine periods when they come home and then they've got to have eight weeks off pay, per the CBA to have a holiday, they're not training until February. So they start training February to start so playing much. in March. We get another disaster next season. So logistically it's not possible. The thing is that this is a tournament that's been ratified by the International Rugby League body, uh, the chairman of which who comes from the UK. This was considered his baby. Uh, they've got some funding from the UK government for it, so they're very keen to see it go ahead. But without the NRL, and the NRL not only makes up the Australian team, but it will make up all the other Pacific Island teams and the New Zealand team, because all those players come from the NRL. And when it's explained to those players about the quarantine period and what it's going to, life's going to be like over there, and when you're going to get back, and you're going to go into quarantine when you get back, and then you're going to have to you know, have eight weeks off before you start training for the season. Um, and then... It's the vaccination issue. We're not vaccinated here in this country. Yep. We're at very small vaccination numbers. We'll have players that won't get vaccinated because of their own beliefs. So when all that's explained to them, I don't think any players are going to the World Cup in England at the end of the year and they can jump up and down all they like. The league told them six months ago, postpone it. And the international body has just forged ahead with it. So without the NRL, I don't know how it exists. All right. World Cup not happening. I think it's across the board. Everyone at this stage, and as you said too, World Cup without the Aussies. Uh, yeah, won't be a part of it. Stay with us. This